Hey folks, how's it going? In this video, we're going to kick off the circuits part of the electromagnetism topic by looking at capacitors and RC circuits. So let's get started. It's worth pointing out that everything in this video was covered in the higher physics course, so this pretty much just acts as a recap. So you should remember that capacitors are electronic devices which store charge and therefore energy in electrical circuits. They are often used in circuits that require a time delay before releasing energy. For example, in the flash of a camera or a defibrillator. Here's an example of what a capacitor looks like in real life, and this is the circuit symbol that you would see in a circuit diagram. So remember the circuit diagram shows the two metal plates. It then says charging and discharging graphs were dealt with at higher level but are shown below as a reminder. Remember that an RC circuit is simply one containing a resistor and a capacitor. So R being the symbol for resistance and C being the symbol for capacitance. So for a charging capacitor we should remember that the current will flow onto the capacitor plates and the potential difference across it will increase. So what we should see is that the potential difference or the voltage across the capacitor increases up to a maximum over time and that current in the circuit will decrease over time. For discharging however it's sort of the opposite where the current flows off of the capacitor plates and the potential difference across it will decrease. So we've got the potential difference across the capacitor or voltage across the capacitor decreasing from its maximum value over time to zero and you'll notice that we've got current decreasing to zero again just like we had for the charging case. However you'll notice that it looks a bit different because we're now in the negative part of the graph down here for current and that's because the current is starting at a maximum negative value as it says here and now it's flowing off of the capacitor plates in the opposite direction to before. So the way we show this opposite direction is by going below the graph to the negative part and showing the current curving up towards zero. I should point out here that for both the charging and discharging graphs we haven't included the potential difference or voltage across the resistor but you should just know that this is going to be the opposite case to the potential difference across the capacitor. So for the charging case potential difference across the resistor will go down over time whereas for the discharging case the potential difference across the resistor will go up to a maximum value. Just to show you a quick simulation to prove that these are the graphs you'll get. Here we have graphs of current in microamps against time on the top and potential difference in volts against time on the bottom. And we've got our circuit here with a resistor, a capacitor, a voltmeter, an ammeter and a battery. And we've got a switch so that we can charge and discharge the capacitor. Let's say I'm using a capacitor with capacitance 33 microfarads and a resistor of resistance 150 kiloohms. So if I hit play here you'll see the voltmeter readings and the ammeter readings changing and these are displayed on the graph. So you can see the current is decreasing over time from a maximum value and the voltage across the capacitor against time is increasing up to a negative value where it started at zero. If I hit play now for the discharging case you'll see that we have voltmeter readings here and negative ammeter readings and the current is decreasing to zero from a maximum negative value this time and the voltage across the capacitor is decreasing over time. Going back to the notes now, we're going to look at factors affecting charging and discharging time. And there are three factors we're going to look at. We'll start by looking at the first two. And it says the time taken for a capacitor to charge is dependent on the resistance of the resistor R because it controls the size of the current, i.e. the charge flow rate, and the capacitance of the capacitor, since a larger capacitor will take longer to fill and empty. As an analogy, consider charging a capacitor as being like filling a jug with water. The size of the jug is like the capacitance and the resistor is like the tap you use to control the rate of flow. Increasing the resistance increases the charging and discharging time because less current flows at the start of the process and you can see this shown in the graphs here of potential difference across the capacitor against time and current against time. So you'll notice that for the smaller resistance value it takes a shorter time to reach maximum voltage whereas for a larger resistance value it takes a longer time. Whereas for current against time, you'll notice that for a smaller resistance value, it takes a shorter time to decrease to zero and it also starts at a higher maximum current. And then for a larger resistance value, the maximum current is smaller than before and it takes a longer time to decrease to zero. Increasing the capacitance also increases the charging and discharging time because more charge is stored in the capacitor. And we can see graphs here similar to the ones that we just saw. So for potential difference against time and current against time, we have that for a smaller capacitance value, it takes a shorter time to reach maximum voltage. And then for a larger capacitance value, it takes a longer time to reach maximum voltage. Whereas for current against time, for a smaller capacitance value, it takes a shorter time to decrease to zero. Whereas for a larger capacitance value, it takes the current longer to reach zero. It then says to note that the amount of charge on the plates increases or decreases exponentially with time. So all of these curves that we've looked at are what we call exponential curves. Lastly, the last factor that affects charging and discharging time is the supply voltage in the circuit. 
so it says that the supply voltage in the RC circuit is also a factor, increasing this increases the time for charging and discharging since it will take the capacitor longer to reach a higher voltage. So just to summarise, we have three factors that affect charging and discharging time for a capacitor. These are the resistance of the resistor, the capacitance of the capacitor and the supply voltage in the circuit. Increasing all three of these things will increase the charging and discharging time for the capacitor. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.